Yo, what is going on guys? It is your boy, Johnny Cage Banger here with another tutorial video. This one is going to be on the new Atlanta, new Migos. They about to do it. They about to take Atlanta over again. One more time uh, before Atlanta's run is over and a new city, a new state, whatever. They're going to sweep it up and make the new rap scene. So what they're doing right now is experimenting with all these different kind of producers, all these different style of beats and style of music. So I did one uh, earlier in the year, even though this is early in the year. I did one earlier. I did Amigo Murder, which is like with them doing the uh, the singing, really with Quavo. Quavo is the nigga. So this is a different style of um, Migo beat that they're introducing into the music scene right now. It has that Zaytoven feel to it, but it also has like a different vibe to it. It's different sounds and it's different um melodies. It's not the same, but it has that inspiration to it, which gives it that Atlanta feel, you know what I'm saying? The Zaytoven, Dirty South, Gucci Man, uh feel. Just what's what's popping right now. We could throw some young Dolph in there. You know what I'm saying? Cause I fuck with Young Dolph. But I'm going to just play the beat so you guys see exactly what I'm talking about. And then I'm going to break it down for you guys. So. saying you see the feel of it is different but as far as like the drums the drums are pretty simple the drums are pretty standard but the melodies and the way that you incorporate and introduce these sounds you really got to dabble in with sound selection and how you selecting your sounds what are these sounds why are you picking this sound over this sound so we're gonna get into uh this whistle it's just a whistle Yada yada, it's a basic whistle. So I'm gonna play the melody. It's simple, it's the same thing, same loop. It's the same simple loop, but it's the repetition in these beats. You don't really have to change these beats a, a lot. The repetition will really hold for itself as long as it has, uh, has a groove to it throughout the whole beat. So, you can just grab a scale, make you a scale. I tell you guys how to make scales all the time. Look at my past videos uh, for the super beginners and who don't know melody structure. Check my old videos out. I, t I tell you guys about this. So, as y'all can see, we go A, D, um, E, F, E, which is basically just this right here. So, a lot of people are trying to figure out how to make their uh, riff do like... But once you learn melody structure and everything, you will know because we can pretty much hear the sound that we want as we making a beat. But it's the sound selection and knowledge of keys and tempos and uh, 
and octaves, that's how we understand and that's how we're able to make the beat that we're thinking. I thought of this beat exactly how it is because I know what I want. I know what kick I wanted. I know what hi-hat I wanted as I was making the beat. So we're just going to go to, we're just going to go right here. Is this 17? Should be 17 on the dot, which I call the intro to the verse. So now that we had that, we had that going, let's mute that. You just need something to lay on top of that. And you can just easily uh, smack a piano in there. You know, the piano, that's that's the easiest thing you can do to a beat is throw a little piano in there. Once again, the repetition, but you building, like I tell you guys, you build these melodies up progressively throughout making the beat. You don't have to just throw a thousand pianos in here to lay on top. Let both of them do their own work. You see what I'm saying? Ain't nothing. It's nice and easy over there. there. Ain't nothing like da na 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 na, and there's a thousand things going on in the melody. Just let the listener enjoy the beat. So now that we do that, we go and grab the water straight from the beach. Now I went to the beach with my phone, sampled this, chopped it up. No, I'm chopping. <laughs> I fuck it around. It's an electrica. It's just in the uh, atmosphere. It's called Beach MF. And whatever key you press, I don't even think the octave changes. I think it's just like literally a sound. Oh, okay. It gets deeper waves. That's pretty cool. Um, that's pretty cool. But I didn't know that. I didn't even mean to really do this. I just I was looking for a sound because as you can see, these two are the same, one and two. So when I was looking for a sound, I had the melody that I wanted because I had something else. I think I had a flute here. Um, and I opened up Electra, and I went to this because I was looking for a deep bass that I'm gonna show you in the next pattern. And when I had this melody set, it turned to the water, and I played it. And it just sounded so crispy to me. I'm like, okay. So it went like this. Oh, yeah. Who you know? Jesus fucking Lord. I was trying to uh, make an obviously not intended joke. About like who puts water in their beats, you know what I'm saying? I put the water, I put the real wave on the beat. Yeah, real talk. Raw tide. Alright, I'll stop. So this this originally what I was looking for right here. A uh, nice deep bass. Something that's going to go nice and, and gravy, you know what I'm saying, with this. Okay, so we're just going to focus on this. This is what everything on it right here. So we're going to focus on this. So the melody is done. You know what I'm saying? I'm done with the melody. I don't do nothing else to the melody. Just that quick. You know what I'm saying? Just that quick. I come in here. That's it. So I do that one time. Copy that four times. I come in here to the piano. I do that one time. Copy that four times.
where are we at? This is an accident, but I laid this pattern out one time, copied it twice. Repetition. Same pattern. This is the same pattern as the water. So, in saying that, what I'm saying is your sound selection and how you select your sounds, that is how you really make the beats pop because you can, I could have put any sound in here, but it wouldn't sound right. You know what I'm saying? It had to be that piano at that octave. It had to be that whistle. It had to be that bass. It had to go that low. You know what I'm saying? You don't just put any bass. You don't just use any whistle. You don't just use any piano. You know what I'm saying? Your sound selection. I am a perfectionist. It has to be, it has to sound, even if it don't sound right to you, it has to sound right to me, period. Like this kick. Let's just play, uh, let's play the drum pattern. That'll be a treat. See what I'm saying? Once you, once you come up with that first melody, I instantly I already have the drum pattern. I had the beat like how I wanted it already in my head before I even did it. You know what I'm saying? So I knew I was like, man, I want that punch, but I want that punch like not not just a punch like you know what I'm saying? Nothing, not none of that. None of that was going. I knew I knew that would go cuz I knew I could turn it into this You know what I'm saying? I knew I could turn that into that. So from my knowledge. So all I had to do was I had checked this but it's really it's not at a key. It's at it's not at anything. So, what does this say? This say G, but we not down there. We right here. So, I didn't I didn't have it on anything. I think I had it on C still. Same thing. Excuse me. Um, Nothing is on. Resample. I could just put it to E3 generic, but that don't really mean shit at this point. And uh, I just changed the octave because since it was at C and I left it at C, now I can just change the octave to how I wanted it. So I had it at A based on just the melody, really. So A. Boy, my stomach is growling. I'm about to go cook me some steak fajitas, my boy. Anyway, before I get sidetracked, um, I had made sure the drunk the kick was at E. I mean at A. So that meant he was gonna hit hard. And then you just turn it up. I have it turned up. You can see my mix from my kick is nothing. It's literally nothing. My master is soft clipper. This is nothing. The love filter is is this. You know what I'm saying? That's not that's not a mix. That's nothing to amplify my drums. All you got to do is put your drum, know the difference between super high octaves, super low octaves, and then just normal octaves. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't want it hitting right there. I wanted to hit a little lower, and then I knew if I turned it up, it'll punch harder. And that's what I wanted. I wanted the beat to have some punch to it. So let's select the uh, pattern again. So now we got the drums. I knew the clap was going to be super easy. I don't even know why I even show you guys that. Just a basic clap. The clap is usually always the same. Um, I love these sticks. So let's 
So let's go to just the sticks without the 808. I mean, without the drum, just the, the snare. Everything goes with the kick. You see, you see my instrumentation, my pattern is, it's perfect. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing, nothing is jumbled. Everything got its own place. And you introducing new sounds into the beat as you going. Like you heard the snare and then you heard the clap combination, but then it was another clap. So one thing as a producer you got to start doing is listening deeply into your music. I also have a, another video coming out called The Producer's Diet Plan, which is just all of this stuff that I do that make my instrumentation and make my music uh, IQ so much better. And it could help you too. You see that? It goes snap, boom, pow. You know what I'm saying? So it's so many different things. But I knew at the tempo of the beat, the the, temp, the beat tempo is very, very high. 152, double time like crazy. So I knew I wanted it to go boom, clap, boom, boom, clap. So. Instead of doing sticks again, I just go to the snare and I just slap the snare in there twice. Boom, boom. It's at the same spot. If you uh, split these up, one to five is right here. Um, five to nine is right here. So it's the exact same spot. I did it once, copied it twice, just to make it longer. I do my stuff from one to nine now. Uh, now, it just makes a smoother workflow for me. And uh, I tell you guys all the time about my workflow. So the clap, the snare clap combination is the same as the stick combination as far as boom, boom. So boom, boom. I separated it to go uh, the clap go boom and then the snare goes boom. So let's go to that. And that just that just adds more flavor. That just adds different flavor to it. Throw the sticks in there. So now you got the the drum pattern rocking, really without the without without too much uh, stress. You ain't doing too much. The shaker, um, the shaker is what really adds a lot of flavor to it to me, honestly. You know what I'm saying? The shaker just comes in. You like, oh okay, you ain't even know it was there. You didn't know that shaker was in there, cause I threw it in right at the tail of the beat. So from one to five which is really just one to three twice, one to five, it just comes in right at the end of the um, repeated beat. So, like, you don't even know when it's coming. It just it just happens, but it gives it the flavor and the beat, and I just, boom, introduce you. Now you got distracted just for a millisecond, but then you back to the beat, you know. Something else just got introduced to the beat. What is that? Those are the bongos. The bongos. So um, <laughs> the bongo, the bongo um, pattern is always um, super simple. It's really just one one snare roll, one bongo roll, and you can do it as um, ever long as you want to. Now the Zaytoven way of doing it, he uh, he makes it roll like this. Instead of, well, he does that too, but the the five barrel roll, 
I call it the barrel roll. I don't call it that, but I just call it this. So that's what we'll call it, the barrel roll. Um, He starts it right in the middle instead of like this or like that. So right in the middle right here, and then he stops it. So that it's not to go all the way around like... It's that one, two, three, four, five. And then it's the intro again. So one to five, it's right at the end. So if you do from one to five with your beats, you should know that it should not be a uh, bongo right here. And it, not should be, it shouldn't be bongos right here. So after the clap, so the clap is here. So skip one from the clap, one, two, three, four, five, or just play it. Do three, the basic three, add two. That's the Zaytoven uh, bongo roll, the barrel roll. And then with the shaker and all these instruments that's been introduced, even though the, the melody is super simple and repetitive, with all these drums and instruments being introduced step by step, sound by sound, and you can just hear that and they're not bouncing on top of each other, that's just perfect. So even without the the bass going. You see, I don't have an 808 in there. I use the bass as the the bass that they looking for. It don't have to always have some... You don't need that. Sometimes you just throw a nice hard-hitting kick in there and then mix that in with a sub or mix that in with some type of low bass or low lead or something like that. And you good. A deep pad, you don't really... It's gonna hit hard. It's hitting hard. So I'm gonna, that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to leave it like that, but for this one, I'm going to do it like that. So as you can see, that's pretty much it. The hi-hat pattern, oh my God, it's, it's literally just that. But you see, this hi-hat, I selected this one because it had that super delay right there. So it's going to give it that groove. So usually I like to use um this one out of the no-key drum kit. Usually I like to use that one. But it, it has no delay on it. It's hidden just as I hit it. You see that? That's giving me some give. It's giving me some delay. It's giving me something that's um that's changing the groove up. You know what I'm saying? It's introducing the new pace to the beat without interrupting the pace. It's just something nice to listen to. It's something nice to the ear, and that's what you want. So let's hear that. So do we want that? Nah, we don't want that. That's what we want right there. And then uh, just the easy chant. I just, again, add some flavor to it. Put some flavor on it. I don't even think I used it, actually. Because it really, the beat was so flavorful. It had so much flavor on it. It didn't need none of this. But let's see. Just for the hell of it. say that for for the fucking the actual sale of the beat when somebody dropped that exclusive like yeah this comes with the chant in it Damn. 
And then I just put it in the chorus because you don't want to just play it all the damn time. So, And then we just get us a little uh, crash. That's it. And the beat is done, y'all. You know what I'm saying? It took me 20, 20, 30 minutes to really explain that. So as you can see, a lot of the things that most people don't get is the tempo and instrumentation. As you start making beats, you will learn more and more about instrumentation and learn how to manipulate patterns without having to um, do so much. You don't need a lot. Like people are like, oh, you punch your, you punch your patterns in. You're a noob or you're yada yada yada. Boy, stop it. So, you know what I'm saying? It's your boy Johnny Cage Banger. Just some nice and slick for you guys. A nice tutorial. Hopefully, I helped you guys. Um, like and comment. Let me know what's what's going on. What y'all want? What y'all want to see next? I always love to hear you guys' feedback. You guys are the best audience on YouTube to me personally. I love to talk to you guys. Love to hang out with you guys. Chit chat, whatever. You guys got my social media. It's in the description below. By the way, Twitter, Instagram, uh, PlayStation Four, whatever. So it don't it don't really matter, dude. So. Just hit me up. Let's get this work, man. 2017, we can get real M's. It's millionaires everywhere. So I'm about to be one of them motherfuckers. Your boy Johnny H. Banger, man. Peace. Boom.